Hola amigos, this is level 12. Today we are talking about the life, sex, and death of Bob Crane. Now, some of you may not know who Bob Crane is, and that's perfectly okay. This little short video doc, I guess you could call it, is meant to chronalize Bob Crane's life the and the mysteriousness of his death and how that is involved in his sex life, because his sex life is very, very um questionable. So, just to begin some background, he was born in Waterbury, Connecticut on July 13th, 1928. Crane was a natural entertainer and by age 11 had learned how to play the drums. He participated in his school's jazz band and orchestra until graduating in 1946. He did a brief stint in the military before being honorably discharged in 1948 and before pursuing a career in radio entertainment. He played on like two different radio shows, one in New York, one in Connecticut. He was very good at being a radio host and being very uh, uh, suave and cool and persuasive. This led to him beginning his acting career and appearing on the Dick Van Dyke Show. The Dick Van Dyke Show was one of those shows where if you got a bit part in it, you were very likely to get other parts as many actors of the 60s, 70s, and maybe even the 80s could trace back their roots to the Dick Van Dyke Show. And Donna Reed was so impressed by Crane's work in the show, she offered him a bit part on her show that turned full full-time for a single year. Bob Crane played like a doctor on her show, I'm pretty sure it was just called the Donna Reed Show, and he did that for like a year, which led to him landing the role as Colonel Hogan in Hogan's Heroes in 1965. He played this role super well. This is his most remembered role. If you look at pictures of Bob Crane, he will either be in his Colonel Hogan garb or it will be the debaucherous picks, but we'll get to that. So the show ended up being a hit, and Crane was nominated for two Emmys, Emmys, none of which he ever won. He also met his future wife on the show, and after divorcing his current wife at the time, married co-star Sidrid Valise on the set of the show. Sidrid Valise played um, the receptionist in Clink's office. She was just pretty. You could tell, like, Bob Crane, first of all, Colonel Hogan in the show kissed, like, every woman seen on the show, but, uh, the receptionist and Tiger he had the most interest with. Crane also played the drum parts in the show's opening, that very famous, uh, drum roll at the beginning is him doing that. He was very successful in drums. Uh, Crane more or less became married to the role as Colonel Hogan, for better or for worse. For better because it earned him a lot of money, no doubt, and he it became a very household-friendly name. For worse because, well, after the show was canceled in 1971, Crane never had a stable role like it again, partly because he really couldn't do much other than be Colonel Hogan because that's what everyone knew him for. He often... He often appeared as bit parts on other shows, including a game show called Tattletales, and began doing dinner theater. He hated this because he wanted to have another stable role other than Colonel Hogan. He wanted to have an actual show for himself. His biggest engagement after Hogan's Heroes, in my opinion, were the two Disney films he did because you got your name in a Disney film. Congrats! You got paid probably good money. It's Disney. Uh, for 13 episodes, he starred in his own show titled The Bob Crane Show before it was canceled by NBC. I'm not sure why it was canceled. I think the ratings were just really bad, like no one was watching it. Also, there were already a lot of shows, just the names of people, like again, the Dick Van, the Dick Van Dyke Show, the Donna Reed Show, the Andy Griffith Show, Archie Bunker's, uh, Archie's, I'm pretty sure it was just called Archie's Place when Archie Bunker did his, like, second stint in show, like it was, it was a lot. So his show just kind of got muddied in the water. So now we are on to Bob Crane's debauchery. And something I want to say is Bob Crane was super, I'm just going to say the word debaucherous <laughs> before Hogan's Heroes. He, since like the early 60s, he was seeing a bunch of women and having a lot of um, relationships with them, a lot of intercourse. Uh, and he also took a lot of pictures of that. He, there's old Polaroids of the camera pointed at his groin with a woman between his legs. It was... It, it was very well documented. Just the public didn't know. His friends and family knew. His public didn't know. So during Hogan's Heroes, Bob Crane was introduced to a man named John Carpenter, and who introduced him was Richard Dawson, who I very extensively looked up if Richard Dawson had any debauchery on him. He did not. Thank the Lord. I love Richard Dawson. Anyways, so Carpenter was known as someone who hooked celebrities up with new groundbreaking home video equipment because it's the latest new thing. And... John Carpenter's client list, I guess, included, like, Elvis Presley, the president, a bunch of... So, he knew how to, like, rub elbows with celebrities and get them to buy his wares. And John Carpenter is played up as the bad guy in many different forms of the media. So, this sparked the friendship between Crane and Carpenter, for Carpenter already enjoyed amateur photography for years of both common and sorted pics. He has a bunch of pictures of his family 
and his sexual subjects. Sometimes websites put them right next to each other and it makes me nauseous. With the introduction of video equipment, Crane can now film his sexual encounters with various women. And something a bunch of people think is that Crane filmed them secretly, but if, well, one, a bunch of the women really looked at the camera and it was very clear it was not <laughs> like it wasn't hidden and two the film equipment of the 70s is huge and it's very hard to like hide <laughs> like it's not the pin cameras that we have like today like I don't know why people thought uh he was hiding it because the equipment is just huge like there's huge like there's just photos of the film equipment and it takes up the entire picture like it's not hard to hide <laughs> so his death while on tour in Arizona, I believe it was a dinner theater tour, uh, Bob Crane was found bludgeoned to death in his hotel room on June 29th, 1978. He was found with his home video equipment and his secret life was revealed to the public because with his home video equipment was all of, well, after he died, like, all of his films and photos that he was kept and safe were just, like, found and the media took it as a storm and was like, Bob Crane's a debaucherous. This also... For some reason, sexual debauchery was related to homosexuality at this time, so there was a theory that Bob Crane was gay, which I don't know if he was. I know some of the pictures I've seen show other men in the pictures other than him, which I won't be showing in this video, but we'll leave links on how to find that information. <laughs> um, shows it with him with other men and things, but I don't think he was gay. Which, if he was, nothing's wrong with that, but like, I don't think he was gay because he had too many female partners. Bye, maybe, but not full-on gay. So his funeral was on <coughs> July 5th of the same year, and over 200 people were in attendance. Some of his pallbearers, which are the people that carry his casket, were fellow Hogan's Hero stars Larry Hovis and Robert Clary. The investigation is questionable. It started with detectives wondering if it was a scorned lover coming back for revenge or an enraged lover until attention turned towards John Carpenter because Trace... Blood amounts were found in Carpenter's car during the original investigation, but nothing was conclusive until later in 1990 when it was believed there were also tissue samples in the car, like the smoking gun one website called it. In 1994, Carpenter went to trial but was acquitted because the evidence was falsified because they just wanted someone to blame and Carpenter was shady as heck, so he was super easy to blame. And in 2016, an interested fan slash, um... I guess detective person finally ran the samples and showed they had no connection to Carpenter like they like it proved the falsification like because if there's a theory that it could be falsified then the evidence I think has to be thrown out because it's unreliable and it could sway a jury accidentally when if it's y'all it, y'all get what I think so Carpenter actually had no connection to this though a bunch of people still want to point the finger at Carpenter just because he introduced the video equipment to Crane and that probably led to his death and sent him into kind of a spiral because he was with like the equipment he was a little bit more interested in the in the debaucherousness of it he like his marriage suffered his relationship with his children suffered it, it was a lot a lot happened due to the film equipment being introduced in his life so, this film called Autofocus was a biome pick meant to tell the life of Bob Crane and was sold to the company by David Crane, Bob Crane's second oldest son, I believe. And the film aired in 2002 and received mixed reviews because it's more or less a porno. Let's be real here. There's like 20 minutes of just Bob Crane's life and then the rest is this weird sexual deviancy. One of the actors that played it, William Dafoe, who plays Bob Crane, uh, actually played a nymphomaniac, another movie of more or less porno status. It's very questionable. I've never seen it, mostly because I don't want to, but I, I, I don't know. According to Scotty Crane, Bob Crane's eldest son, the movie shows many inaccuracies, including the fact that his father did not have a penile implant, nor did his father secretly film women. The penile implant was actually admitted two or so years after Bob Crane died, so that's obviously fake. Also, again, the camera equipment is super clunky. You can't hide it. Again, I don't know how you would. I guess you could if you tried, but you really can't. It was <clears throat> Sorry, I'm slowly dying. In response to the film, Scotty Crane created a website where all the pictures and videos of Bob Crane could be viewed for the right price. I found this website. You have to go through possibly illegal means. I'm not entirely sure to find it, but it exists on the Wayback Wind Machine, and I'll link that below. And again, the site has 
since been taken down but can be found by other means. I'll link the Wayback Wind Machine, or the Wayback Machine, I'm not sure, in the description below and you can find it yourself. I will also link some articles below that helped me create this video. Uh, the official Bob Crane, not the official Bob Crane website, but WhoKilledBobCrane.com does have pictures of the actual crime scene. And listen, not much disturbs me. Like, I'm not, like blood and stuff doesn't scare me but those pictures made me kind of nauseous so while i will link it below i do uh, recommend clicking on that website with caution because it's like the focal of the website are those pictures because they're free and you can request more i don't know how much more gruesome it gets other than seeing bob crane actual naked dead body on the bed and zoom ins of the bludgeoned head i don't know how much more you want but that's what the website shows and as I said, I will link other things, but take caution when you click on any of them because they are all very graphic because this has been such a hot case. It's so interesting and it's the life of Bob Crane. And I just want to say, I don't support Bob Crane's debaucherous ways, but I still love his role as Colonel Hogan on Hogan's Heroes. And I don't think he meant it to go as far as it did to... The point of him like I'm pretty sure his debaucherous attitude is why he was killed not just because he was a famous celebrity I don't support Bob Crane cheating on his wife with all these women I don't support a super debaucherous lifestyle but I do think Colonel Hogan the role he played I still support the role I still like Hogan's heroes I'm sure whatever else he was in was like decent and okay I don't think it was bad um but it's just there's a lot of mystery and a lot of takeaway from this, and once I learned this of Bob Crane, it was very hard for me to watch Hogan's Heroes and see Colonel Hogan in the same way. But as long as you don't marry the character to their role, it, it should be fine. Anyways, that was a lot, and this video has been on the back burner for a while, and usually when videos are on the back burner, they usually don't get made. But this one finally got made. Thank the Lord. Thank, thank the Lord. So, I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you liked this. I hope it wasn't too disturbing. Um... Hopefully it gets out, because I know I said a lot of words YouTube doesn't like. Anyways, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for more random fandom things. Ciao, chicos.